Welcome to Lesson 321, Introduction to Equations. Today we're going to talk about how to identify equations and how to create equations from word problems. Alright, so first we need to know what an equation is. An equation has the base word equal. Equal means the same, so what's on one side has to be the same as what's on the other side. So an equation is a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign. It shows two statements that are equal, meaning they have the same value. So previously we talked about expressions where we would have x plus 6 and that would be an expression. To make it an equation we would say x plus 6 equals 10. Okay, so now because it has an equal sign it becomes an equation. So what's on this side has to be the same as what's on this side. Right, so this would be your example for equation. And if you get confused, remember the word equal is the base word of equation and it has an equal sign. An open sentence. So just like when we talked about expressions, how they have algebraic expressions, expressions that have variables, well, equations, we don't call algebraic equations, we call them open sentences. Open sentences are equations with one or more variables. Right, so the reason it's considered an open sentence is because it has something that can change in it. So if I have a plus 6 equals 20, that would be an open sentence. If these are all numbers, it is just an equation. So open sentence for equations with variables. And your last word for today, solution. The solution is the value of the variable that makes the equation true. So in this case, if I do have a plus 6 equals put here, 20, I know that the only thing that can make this sentence true is a equals 14. So the solution is a equals 14. Put all of this in your example, but circle this part, showing that this is the solution. All right. So what I want you to do, I want you to take a look at these. They are listed in your notes. And underneath, I want you to write, is it an equation or is it an expression? Remember, the telltale sign is, does it have an equal sign? When you come back, we'll check your answers. All right, so here you have 14 equals 2 times n is an equation. 2 plus 7 equals 9 is an equation. And 10 minus u equals 4 is an equation. The other two are expressions because they do not have equal signs. All right, so when you think of an equation, I want you to think of a scale. And when we want to, when we have a scale, we want to balance it. Or if we have a teeter-totter, you try to balance it. So what you have on one side has to be equal to what you have on the other side. Otherwise, it's going to be unbalanced. So in this case, over here, I have 3 plus 2. And the only thing that is equal to that is 5. If I were to put 6 over here, my teeter-totter would be unbalanced. Okay, same thing. I have 15 over here, so I can put 5 times 3 on this side to balance it. I could also change the 5 times 3 and maybe put... So I could take out that, and I could put 5 plus 10. That would equal 15. Or 9 plus 6. So there's lots of different options, but you want to make sure that what's on one side is equal to what's on the other side. All right, so when you're balancing the equation, you just want to look for what's going to straighten out your balance. In this case, we have 21. You could also put, instead of 21, you could put 3 times 7, because 3 times 7 is also equal to 7 plus 14. Or you could also put 20 plus 1. So it doesn't have to be an expression and an answer, it could be an expression is equal to an, an another expression. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead at this point, you should get the point, so here 8 would be the case, or you could do 4 plus 4. Alright, so now we're going to create equations from the scenarios listed below. 
So again, you need to look for the keywords in your uh, sentence. 18 more than a number gives you 29. So more than tells us that we're going to add. And we know we're going to add 18 because it's 18 more than a number. But remember, we look for order here. More than a number means we start with n, and then we have 18, and it gives you 29. So it equals 29. Okay, so look for those keywords. That'll tell you what your operation is. And then you have to be careful with the order because when we have words like more than, less than, the difference that they can change the order of the numbers. Okay. So when you have a problem where you're thinking, ooh, to solve it, I would use subtraction, you would make an addition equation. And we'll get into that more when we talk about solving equations. But in this case, it might help you to say, okay, well, if I wanted to find my missing number, I would subtract. So I know that I need to set up my problem as an addition problem. All right, I'll do one more with you. So eight groups of a number is 24. Well, groups of you, tells us that we're going to multiply, and I have eight groups of a number. Well, since I don't know what the number is, I know I have to use a variable. Is 24, so is is going to always be your equal or gives you. If you want to write these down, you can. Gives you. It is, gives you, and equal, okay, all synonymous in this case. So eight groups of a number, so eight groups of, so eight times n equals 24. All right, so I want you to try this one on your own. When you come back, we'll check your answer. All right, so to solve this one, we know that we would use subtraction because if we wanted to know how many shoes that Cindy has, we could say, oh, well, I would just do 19 minus 12, and that would give me my answer. But because it's not, we're not just looking for the answer, we're looking to set up an equation, we have to look for those key words. And I know that because Cindy has 12 more pairs of shoes than Chloe, and I know that there are 19 pairs of shoes in all, that tells me that whatever Chloe has, which I don't know, so I'm going to use C for Chloe, I would add 12 to it and get the total of 19. So if I took 19 minus 12, I could get the number of shoes that Chloe has. And again, because I know that I would use subtraction, I know that I would use make an addition equation. Look for these key words when you're setting up your equations. All right, so you have two more problems that I'd like you to try on your, or on your own. And if you have any questions, please be sure to post them to Edmodo.